Hello to you. It had an excitement and an atmosphere you could almost taste in those days, didn't it? That's what we'll be looking at in this new series, recalling some of those marvellous moments of West Country soccer history and the men who made them for us. In this programme, the man they called the maestro. The Swindon boy, who in one of the most sensational episodes in football, went up to London with his local team and they won the League Cup in front of 100,000 people. Rodgers is streaking ahead and he's onside! And 18 years on, uh, he's with us now, Don Rogers, whose extraordinary skill, speed and gift of scoring remarkable goals wasn't just football, it was a little bit of real magic. But now if Rogers can attack him, he might have a chance. He's got past Marsh, and now he's confronted by another. Rogers again, and a goal! Don Rogers! Don, welcome. How does it feel for you seeing those, those remarkable goals again? Uh, brings back a lot of very happy memories. You know, so it's things that you can remember and seems to be like yesterday that happened. Were those the golden days of football or is it just old stages like me thinking those days were better? Well, I think we probably all think they were the golden days, but uh, I think they probably were. Because everything, you know, the maximum wage came off the players in 1960. Um, huge crowds, no crowd trouble, you know, and everybody went and enjoyed themselves. OK, Don Rogers then, born at Paulton near Bristol, uh, joined Swindon as an apprentice when he was 15, way back in 1960. And in the following years, when he wasn't scoring goals, he was streaking through defences to lay them on. And if you remember this, you go back as far as I do. Good ball to Smart from Rogers. Oh, good raid, this Horsfield. It's there! Back to Rogers. Give it to the experts. The expert didn't do so well. Noble is there. A magnificent goal by Peter Noble. Smith intercepts and away goes Rogers. Away goes Rogers. He's got Horsfield inside him and Noble. There it is. It's there. It's there. Horsfield robbing Rooks there. Good ball by Noble to Donald Rogers. Don't takes on Jacobs. There it is. Fine goal. A fine goal by Arthur Horsfield there. And Rogers is loitering behind Smith there. It might be the big shot. There it goes. There it is. It's there. It's, it's the equaliser. He's given it to Noble. Peplo, a bit of a chance here for Rogers. Chips it, Horsfield, it's in the net. A very good goal there, made by Donald Rogers, scored by Arthur Horsfield, who has scored in all his four last games against Bristol City. Well, what do you think of that lot then? That Tremendous. was when I <laughs> coined that phrase, it's there. I mean, I got so used to saying that. There were a lot of goals about then, Don, from your team. Superb action, that was, wasn't it? What do you remember about the, the Peter Nobles and the... Uh, oh, tremendous, man. I mean, they were... People. Well, they were... Um, I don't know, they were good players at that particular time for Swindon. You were a young lad growing up amongst older guys. What was, what was life like at the club? A lot of money about? Um, no, there wasn't very much money around, no, not at all. I mean, uh, I'll give you an example of that, is when we used to uh, wear basketball boots for training. And if you busted one basketball boot, you didn't get a new pair. I mean, you got on another one to match it. And if it had a hole in the bottom, they used to give you a piece of cardboard to put in the bottom. Thrifty days, eh? Oh, yeah. Pound was worth a pound in Swindon, wasn't it? That's right, it? yeah, it was. 
But then the Rogers talent really flourished. In 1967, uh, no fewer than 18 clubs were after the young winger. But Rogers stayed with his uh, homely little third division club. Uh, then in 1969, one of the great storybook episodes of British soccer. Swindon began a truly amazing run in the League Cup. The side then included the likes of Rod Thomas, Joe Butler, Roger Smart, Stan Harland, Frank Burrows, goalkeeper Peter Downsborough, John Trollope still with the club, Peter Noble. And unbelievably, Little Swindon were in that final at Wembley. And uh, if that wasn't enough, they were facing perhaps one of the most celebrated Arsenal sides since the last war. Peter Storey, Simpson, Bob Wilson, Radford, Graham, Bobby Gould, Pat Rice, Georgie Armstrong, McNabb, Frank McClintock. This then was the scene as Little Swindon from the West Country set up for Wembley on Saturday, 5th March, 1969. There's Danny Williams. What a tremendous achievement by him, and certainly there can be no prouder moment for any manager than to lead his side out for a Wembley final in front of a crowd of 100,000. And, of course, they have a man, their number 11, that uh, Arsenal must fear, Don Rogers, whose football really puts him in a class high above the third division, a winger who can score goals, and he's got 22 of them this season. John Smith, coming away for Swindon. Don Rogers, beating one and another. And the roar is going with him. A little jink, and a good cross. And it needed Ewer to get that one away. Good work by Rogers, Smith, and a chance for Rogers again to keep it up. Off the referee, breaking nicely for Swindon to Smith. To the far post, Noble is there, and Wilson lost the ball! And my goodness, Smart was nearly there to bang it home. A bad mistake by Wilson. Noble to Smart. Rogers running inside, and Rogers is away! Now here's a great chance for him! Good work by Wilson! Noble following up, and my goodness, that Arsenal defence was caught wide open then, and Wilson atoning for that earlier mistake. Simpson. Radford! And now Rogers bringing it out of defence for Swindon. Lovely play. And there to take the return. Good play by Rogers. Oh, and a terrible mix up. Noble. Simpson. Smart. And goal! Shook those city slickers, didn't you? Eh? I think that goal gets funnier every time I see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Roger didn't think Not that. Not for you and Wilson. Great day for Roger Smart, though, eh? Oh, yeah, tremendous, eh? yeah, because he didn't score that many, Roger, really. You know, to and score. at that stage, the Arsenal were worried? Very worried, I should think, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we were giving them as good as we were getting. Thoughts are going through the Arsenal bench. Don Howe in the centre there, and on the right of the picture, the Arsenal manager, Bertie Mee. Rogers. Look at that, beating McNabb, but not Yor. And he's taking two men to look after him all the time, and you're putting it back to Wilson. Looking for Radford. Trollope misjudging that one. He's only got Gould in the middle. Armstrong steaming up as well. Radford, good save. Well, he must have felt that Downsborough would have one eye on men advancing on him, and he tried to pile one in there just inside that near post. And here comes the corner. Gould again putting Downsborough under pressure, but Downsborough as cool as you like. Really has played well, this Swindon goalkeeper. Radford again, trying to flick it on. Gould is in there. And another corner. 
under that crossbar, caught going in, and another corner. And the man who comes out of, with so much credit is this man, Peter Downstra. Against all the odds, he's getting up there and punching these balls away. Here's another one coming in. You're getting in. Up we go again. McNabb. And now Heath. Well, there's no doubt where they come from. Here comes yet another corner from Armstrong. Again under that bar and again down for there. What a game he's having. First game he's ever had at Wembley, and my goodness, he's going to remember this one. Yet another corner. Placed a bit wider this time, looking for McClintock. And Yor. But before Yor can get there, it's Haaland. It's still bobbing about. McNerrick! Oh, fine save! It's still not out. Radford. Radford again. Port going in and down spot. What a goalkeeper! Goalkeeper Peter Downs were magnificent. That, that side had become unbeatable, hadn't it, in your minds? You'd had 11 games to get to Wembley unbeaten. Yeah, I think, you know, everybody was saying that Arsenal were a better team than us and we're going to win. But I don't think there's one person on our team thought that. Because we'd beaten some good teams along the way and we were playing really well. So we fully expected to win. All right, and so the story rolled on now. Can you hold out? Five more minutes now for Swindon to hold out. And judging by their performance over the last 85 minutes, there's nothing to say that they can't do it. Your Straight to Rogers of all people. Graham, now cooled off in support. Can Cool get to it now? It's a goal! By Cool! And my goodness, is he not pleased with life? Bobby Cool! Oh, what a smile! the man who has done more than any man could ask of a goalkeeper this afternoon and now with something like three minutes left of normal time he's beaten at last can you remember what you thought three minutes from the end the cup, cup snatched away oh well, i think it reminded us of the uh, semi-final a bit because it happened to us in the semi-final as yes. well but i think as soon as the Whistle went for full time. I think everything was okay then because we realised we were stronger than them and it looked like we would win it. You thought you were stronger than mighty Arsenal? Yeah, well, well we all thought that. And let's have a look. Indeed, you were to be. Butler to Noble to Penman on the break. Heath outside him as Heath. Heath trying to dummy past McNabb and does so. There's a chance for that. What a let off again for Arsenal. From Roger Smart, the man who scored their goal. But very good save by Bob Wilson, pushing it onto the post. They really do come back, these Swindon boys. Well, we've got just about to the end of this period of extra time. And it's a brave man who put his money on a winner of this game. It's still so very even and so very, very close. Very nearly through. Rogers! A goal by Rogers! Don Rogers! Goal 23 of the season for him. And the most important one of all. What a tremendous comeback by Swindon Town. All the courage in the world to go ahead of Arsenal again after being pulled back so tragically, so close to the end of normal time. Don Rogers puts them ahead. Butler to Penman. 
Rogers. The great hero, here's Rogers again. And again, so much confusion in this usually so orderly Arsenal defence. And now can Heath get to this one? He's got Noble there in the middle. Heath. Oh, just wide. Well saved by Wilson. You're now for Arsenal. And smart away for Swindon. Rogers is streaking ahead and he's onside. Beautiful play! That is that! Swindon down, utterly and completely in the clear. And there is this incredible scoreline. Arsenal 1, Swindon Town 3, the final whistle. Swindon have won the Football League Cup for 1969. The man who scored two of them, number 11. Now it's Swindon's turn to go and collect the Football League Cup from Her Royal Highness, the Princess Margaret, being led by number six, Stan Harland, such an inspiring skipper. And that's the moment all Wiltshire has been waiting for. Choice, wasn't it? Absolutely tremendous, yeah. yeah. Don, your trademark was going through on the goalkeeper as you did for the goal that finished the Arsenal. Mm. What was your secret? Because you always made it look so easy and goalkeepers look so foolish. I think with um, when you get clean through like that, I think the f first thing you have to figure out in your mind is what you're going to do. Whether you're going to take it past them, you're going to shoot, you're going to chip. And if you don't make your mind up, then you've got no chance. Because you end up, you don't know what you're going to do. Now, 1969 was the year that Georgie Armstrong was taking corners against you. It was also the, the year that Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon. And looking at that Wembley pitch, it looked like the moon. I don't remember it being so bad, Don, and yet I was there. Why was it so bad? Yeah, it was diabolical, because um, on the Wednesday, apparently they had the Royal Horse Show there. And if, if you actually look at it, where all the fences were, there's uh, all mud patches. Royal Horse Show. Well, Swindon put on a royal performance. What's your one great memory briefly of that of that match a great memory would be um the third goal going in the back of the net and turning around and saying they can't beat us now <laughs> they can't beat us now eh? epic match prophetic words they didn't you really took london by storm oh you're tremendous nothing else you know you can't say anything else it's just <laughs> every time you think about it, it brings back good memories yes indeed well back home in swindon the town was to go wild team were treated as heroes the celebrations went on and on I was in amongst it uh, Don what do you remember about those wonderful days and nights well I remember about the tremendous amount of people that was obviously lined the streets I mean I think practically everybody in Swindon was out watching us come back look at those pictures I mean there's thousands and thousands of them and the, the town hall square was absolutely jam-packed yeah, someday, but in 1972 you were eventually to leave Swindon for the bright lights of London and uh, the team Crystal Palace and for two years among the adulation, the glamour and the big money of the big city, the Rogers magic was still at work. ...to get away to give relief to the defence. Rogers now, a touch on for Whittle. Played again for Rogers. Marsh is covering him. But now if Rogers can attack him, he might have a chance. He's got past Marsh. And now he's confronted by another. Rogers again, and a goal! Don Rogers! Some goal, but what was Don Rogers' best ever performance? Most folk would automatically say his cup final. But funnily enough, Don, uh, I know that you have another game in mind which might qualify. Mulligan. Don Rogers. Oh, nicely inside the full back for Mulligan. Here's a chance, and a goal! Scored by Mulligan, but made beautifully by Don Rogers.
Rodgers. And he was sneaking in there, but it was the pass by Rodgers that made it. So United kick off again. A goal down. And it's with Ian Moore. Straight into the path of Rodgers. Now here's the chance again to make another one. Just across that goal, Stepney getting a despairing hand to it. Still with Rogers. All played inside for Mulligan. And another goal! Kenny Mulligan second. Made for him by Don Rogers, just as the first one was. The ball from Rogers. And Mulligan. A fairly simple task. Whittle. Rogers, and he's onside, Don Rogers. Six in one side now. That's there. That's number three. Tremendous presence of mind by Don Rogers. Turning it one side of uh, Stepney, running the other, and then finding the net to put Crystal Palace three nil ahead. Whittle coming in, and now Rogers away again. Well, he got him going one way, got him going the other, just over. Clive coming in for Palace. And this has been their greatest afternoon. And there's Rogers. will this be five? It's going to be five. It is five. Yes, now I know what you mean. Eh? You enjoyed that? Super. Yeah, uh, you know, in the in the concept context of both the clubs, when I mean, that resort meant as much to Crystal Palace as what the cup final did to Swindon, and the fans were, well, they went wild afterwards. I never understood why you didn't play for England's senior side. Why do you think you didn't? You were clearly one of the best players of your time. Difficult thing for me to answer that, really. Um, I mean, wingers weren't really in fashion at the time when I was at my peak, probably, you know. And lots of people said I should have played for them, but uh, the manager didn't think so, so that's fair enough. They used to say you wouldn't always be as good away from home as you were at Swindon or at Crystal Palace. But that applies to most people. I mean, you've watched a lot of football, and yeah. I mean, that applies to nearly yeah. every team in the, yeah. in the country. Did you really put yourself out, though, Don? Did, it, did you bust a gut, or were you just the ice-cold genius? I guess, well... I didn't bust a gap, no. no. I think um, I think football is a case that you can either play it or you can. I don't think you can teach somebody to play football. You can make them make their uh, skills better, but you can't teach them the game of football. I mean, talking to you now about great days, you're very calm about it all. Watching you play, your f face is expressionless as you <coughs> knock it in the net. Are you as calm and cool as you appear to be? Um, I was probably more so on the football pitch than anywhere else, I think. I think it's something I enjoyed doing, and uh, it came fairly easily, I think, really. So, you know, it, it just seemed that way. Well, certainly you made it look easy. Yeah, it wasn't as easy as it looked. <laughs> <laughs> well, after that, you joined Queen's Park Rangers just for one year, and then it was back to Swindon for 75, 76, and for the last 10 years or so, Don, you've been happy running your sports shop and building business. Uh, do you ever miss the game, and what do you think to the present game? Well, I don't think I really miss the game. Um, well, I haven't had a, a sort of serious injury in that and I haven't had an operation. I think that more or less came to that out anyway. Mm -hmm. um, as regards to the model, I think the game has changed a hell of a lot. And I think we see a lot more uh, long balls nowadays. I think people try to get the ball forward a lot quicker. They don't play it from the back so much. And they put pressure on defences. And it seems to work out. Do you like watching it as much as the when you played? Oh, no, I don't like watching it as much. I think there's probably a lot more action now in the penalty boxes because the ball's in there a lot more. Yes, a lot of action, perhaps not so much pretty scientific stuff. No, there isn't. Any. But we enjoyed watching you, young man, all the time, and I've got a little surprise for you now because here <laughs> is the old pot, the League Cup of 1969, which you and your team won. Well, that was once under my bed. Was it? <laughs> I hope you treated it properly if it was under your bed. Young man. <laughs> yes, I did. Eh? It had just been full of something nice, I take it. No, never. And when you look at it now, what is it? What do you think? Um, 
Very fond memories, yeah. Very. Fond memories? Well, I'm sure you have, and it's been wonderful sharing them with you. Thank you for coming, Don, to join us and give us a glimpse of some of those really magic moments and the great enjoyment you gave to us all. Thank you.